Hello and welcome to CAD Live, episode 51. It is the, what day is it, the 17th of December? Or is yeah. it the, it is the 17th of December. We're rushing towards Christmas, nearly time for Christmas, for Father Christmas to uh, to sneak down your chimney and fill your stocking jack. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Almost. Maybe I'll finally get that toy I always wanted. Absolutely, absolutely. Maybe you'll bring well, hot babes. That would be nice. Well, I think it would be only right wouldn't it after this year that we've had that santa you know pulled his pulled his uh, finger out and actually delivered something that we want you know so i think uh, some attractive women would be very much in keeping with that with that sentiment don't you oh yeah if that fat bastard wants his cookies and milk he'd rather, better bring me back <laughs> man like, absolutely this, this is this is an honest trade old man Exactly, exactly, exactly. Do you think, have you ever seen George Bruno and Santa Claus in the same room <laughs> at the same time? I haven't, actually. Well, there you go. There you go, you see. I mean, like, who knows the? Tr who knows how far this rabbit hole goes down, you know? I mean, mm. I, I'm not sure anyone would sit on his lap, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, who I knows? Don't anyway, no, Christmas yeah, conspiracy. But um, so we're here today and we've called the show How to Ask a Girl for a Date uh, because Jack had mentioned that talking about what happens when you get a phone number and then how do you bridge to the date might be an interesting topic to look at. And we can certainly start off with that. Um, but I, I think today, really, you know, we're kind of in that winding down sort of period now, aren't we, where it's a bit like when you're at school or college and the holidays are coming up, but, but the term's still going and you're sort of a bit like the teacher says, oh, you can play some games or whatever. So I think we're getting to that part of the year now where it's kind of like uh, year end roundups and um, just generally shooting the shooting the shit right. So, so, yeah, I mean, we can get into any sort of subject area we want. And by the way, guys, if you've got questions, if you've got comments, et cetera, just put them in the chat um, because we are here to to answer your questions. I mean, Jack is obviously a content creator. He talks about dating and game and stuff, but he's also um, a strength trainer as well, a strength and fitness trainer. And we were saying off, off air before we came on, he's actually going to be leaning more into that space again going forward. So if you've got any questions about, about that side of things, about how to get fit, how to get buff, et cetera, et cetera, um, Jack, is right. the man to, Jack is the man to talk to, guys. Well, I so, do like that. You know, exactly. I mean, as buff as I am, I can't help everybody. Do you know what I mean? So we have to shed the we have to shed the uh, spread the spread the love a little bit. So Jack is here to to help out with that kind of stuff. Um, also, Jack and I were just on a webinar. We were just doing the uh, I'm doing the CAD Academy webinars this week. So it's been quite an intensive schedule. And um, I was just doing the webinar, and Jack very kindly popped in, and we had a really good session, didn't we? Talking about day oh, game yeah. and uh, you know how to approach and uh, the the day game model basically. Is that very productive? Is that something that you've been were familiar with before the London Day Game model? I was familiar with it. I was familiar with it. I always preferred to use Day Bang by Roosh. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. It's kind, of, it's kind of the indirect direct approach because I've said it before. Like most girls know where you talk to them. They just exactly. know. yeah. But Roosh just gave these brilliant openers because, well, most of the time you really do want to know where something is. But what I then used to do, well, I just the pet shop. <laughs> yeah, he always okay. used a pet shop. But yeah. when I was in London and things like that, every time I'm somewhere new, I actually want to know where the bookstore is. But what I used to do, I just wait for a hot girl to come by. I'm like, I'm not going to ask the fat girl. I'm not going to ask the old man. No, I'm asking someone specifically for that. Yeah, because I really wanted to know that. But she was actually hot as well. But when it came to the London day game model. That was way more direct, and yeah. I like to switch them up a bit because yes. with the London Day game model, it's just boom. I saw you walking there, and I wanted to say hello because you look absolutely adorable. But yes. something <laughs> about you, yes. But you're clearly a silly bitch. So <laughs> what are you? Gonna <laughs> yeah, that's that's it, isn't it? It's it's go in, it's give the compliment, and then it's pull the compliment back. Um and um and it it really works, and it really works, and uh, I I think. The whole sort of direct, indirect thing is it re remains uh, a big bone of contention in this space. And uh, I, I think both of them can work really well. I like direct because I like just being honest about the the why you're there. It's mm -hmm. like, I saw you. You're really pretty. I mean, I you know, it's just like, that's true. And it also cuts to the chase. Having said that, um, 
you know, indirect, because like you say, I mean, it, it, in a sense, you don't need to telegraph it, though, because she kind of knows anyway. So indirect can equally work. And um, I think as long as you are uh, walking in the direction of the girl, opening your mouth and saying something, then you are putting yourself in a better space than 99% of other guys, right? Mm -hmm. And it saves a lot of time. It exactly. Really does. Exactly. Exactly. Save the West. Sue Lilliman says, "Are you? What are your plans to save the West this Christmas, Jack? Are you, uh, are you going to be? Uh, I don't know. Um, I'd be knocking, hoping. Knock, I'd be hoping. On, you were going to say. I was going to say you're going to be knocking on some degenerates' doors and telling them to stop. Um, you know, to 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 to, to get married and to to settle down and uh, raise a family on a on a rural farm somewhere out in the countryside." trying to introduce them to Christ. No, I was actually hoping to ruin some future wives for somebody. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So what's what's happening with your show at the moment, by the way? Um, and, uh, and, and, and how's that going? With Red Evening, you mean? Yeah. Oh, Red Evening's just going along as it should be every week on uh, Friday. No, for me, it's Saturday morning because I'm a... Uh, European, so it's 6 a.m. on a Saturday. But for yeah. most Americans, where most of my audience is, it's around 10 p.m. Uh, what's it? Salt Lake City time. So somebody right. has to point out to me what acronym that is. But uh, we mostly discuss things after the red pills. Like, okay, we're red pill aware now. Now what? What yeah. are we going to do with it? So marriage yeah. is off the table. Kids is not necessarily off the table, but do you want them? Don't you want them? Because where the world is going right now, little bit into politics. We try to stay away from that as much as possible. But a certain ideology reigns supreme right now. So how are you going to handle that? How are you going to handle certain things at work? And how are you going to navigate the dating market right now? Because, well, yeah. it's brutal. It is Absolutely brutal. Well, and there are. Hmm? Well, you were telling me this before you we came on air, actually. So, did you want to share your recent experiences with this? Oh yeah, absolutely. Because it's pretty, it's pretty funny. Because in Red Evening, there's a sort of timeline. Because you can notice me having success, and you can notice me failing. And it's the same with Rob. Like one week, it's we're all positive about it. I don't like dating. Oh, people should has, whine and complain. Just one quick: Has Rob ever been married? By the way, he has. He's divorced. Oh, he has. Okay, okay. Has he got? Has he got kids? Or is he? No, no, no kids. Okay, okay. not and that we know of. <laughs> and he's happy to now. He's he's free and single and all the rest of it. He is one happy degenerate. He really is. He's he shared some stories with me. By God, man. You two will get along great. Well, I'm a big fan of his stuff, actually, because he does seem to be very degenerate. And um, I can only approve of that because, you know, as we know, there's quite frankly too many boring a-holes have, you know, taken up residence in this space. And, uh, you know, it's about time that somebody made degeneracy great again. So I'm glad that he's around. And I, I keep trying to organize a show with him. But um, I think he's mainly around on weekends and I don't always do go live on weekends. So but we'll sort something out at some point anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you two be front runners of degeneracy. <laughs> Absolutely. Same as Vince from Masculine Geek Man. It's like, whoa, well, you're into that. Yeah, he's into Ooh. some very, he's into some degenerate stuff for sure. He definitely mm -hmm. is. So, so, yeah, so you were saying there's ups and downs in the dating market, and you, you, that is reflected in, you know, how you guys come across. Mm -hmm. Like, some weeks during the show, we're both very positive on it. And, oh, guys shouldn't complain that much. And just do the work and you will find. And then the other week, you'll hear me cursing and screaming like, it's all fucked. It's like, we're never going <laughs> to. Yes. But then it, it really differs. Like, I've had periods where I've had a different bird every other week. Mm. Mm. Or every week, even. It's like, oh, this is going great. Everything's fine. Like, oh, you people should just lift more and whatever. And then there's like weeks where I've got nothing. Mm. So mm. it fluctuates. It fluctuates a lot. And this week, even, as I mentioned before we went live, and I won't go into details, but you get a match, you get the number, and they're hot and heavy, whatever, for that night. But you're like, ah, do I want to go out right now? I have to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> you get spicy pictures. And then all of a sudden, the day afterward, cold, absolutely mm. nothing. Like last night, you showed me every 
detail of your body. And now it's like nothing. It's like, oh, okay. So apparently now we're at a stage where you get the match, get the number, and you have to go out the same evening. Otherwise, you ain't getting any. Now, <laughs> when it's like 6 p.m., kind of like that, okay, fine. But 10, 11 p.m., if I'm even awake, it's like, oh. I know, I, I know, know, man. Oof. When you get to our age, you know, you need to uh, – <laughs> it's it's a bit much. I mean, I mean, like I have to say, I mean, my – uh, the days of my sort of going out at 11 o'clock because some birds sent me a message are probably likely over. But sometimes, but even a few years ago, that was still the requirement, right? I mean, if you wanted to, you know, cash in on your position in the market, as it were, you would have to go out as and when the, you know, the, the option was available, right? And, um, you know, people might say, well, that's being a dancing monkey, but you've got to be pragmatic as well, haven't you? I mean, you know, it's kind of like if you if you're too rigid in terms of, what you're prepared to do, then you're probably not going to get anything. So it's a it's a it's a tricky one. But um, I mean, I was saying before, do you regard the dating market as being almost like the crypto market? You could almost have you could have graphs of it, couldn't you? <laughs> sort of like where the price is going and so on. It is actually a very good comparison. In all honesty, like in my experience, yeah, ups and downs, ups and downs. I mean, but when it goes up, it goes up good. If you know what I mean, it's like, yep, it's like wow, this, this is why we put the effort in. It's like, well, dating's hit 20,000 per coin now. <laughs> We're going all in. We're going all in on dating. Um, Weeds and Flowers has said dating is fun. It indeed. Is. Thank you for that comment. And uh, Wayne, who's a, a regular contributor to the show, says, if you're good looking, the dating market is not brutal. Chads have never had it so easy to pump and dump with apps. But that will mean I'm not good looking. Like, <laughs> you're an ugly boy. Well, mate, I'm, a, I'm a five, so I, I don't know. I mean, you know, I... I, I you're clearly several points above, but um, <laughs> yeah, you are you are an ugly bastard, Jack. But but oh. I mean, look, but, but listen, like, but but here's the thing: that there's there's clearly more nuance in this market than people understand. Because how is it? Obviously, you were good looking enough for that girl or those girls to send you their new pictures and stuff. So obviously, they were kind of to some degree interested on one day and then they, the next day they go quiet. So how does that happen? Did you suddenly become uglier during the night? Did you drop from a seven to a six or something? Or I mean, what happened? I have no idea. And for people wondering, like maybe they were stock images or whatever. No, because I'm always pretty, how do I say that? I'm always, um, I always kind of tell them, like, okay, do it like this then. And that's how I know it's oh, like. You, you, know, you, actually, you actually ask for a, you're, you're demanding. No, 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 no. Like you, you get hot and heavy on text, and then you just describe kind of how you want them to take it, if you know what I mean. Oh. <laughs> mm. I see. Okay. Kind of like that. But, yeah, what happens, I mean, we both know women gonna, are going to change their mind whenever, whatever they want. It's like hot and heavy one day, cold on the next. Maybe they found another match that same night that did want to show up. Well, yes. Then you're, then you're out of the game. It's yeah, it's exactly. that simple. It really is. That yeah, it's happens. it's a very it's a very fast moving, fluid marketplace, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. it's it's like, and you can establish a position in the market. You know, you start talking to a girl, and there's some reciprocation there, and you think, okay, this is good. But it, unless you unless you cash out at the right time. And I think we're. I don't think we're extending the metaphor too much. Unless you cash out at the right time, you can lose your profit on that trade, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. So it's um, and it, you know, like it, it depends how much energy you've got. Because in some ways, it can be really fun and exciting. Because if you if you're throwing out loads of, you're doing lots of approaches, you're swiping a lot, you've got lots of options sort of on the boil. Then this could be quite cool. It's like, oh, this one, this one might come off. Oh, this one's going to come off. Blah blah blah. And you can get kind of into it. But um, on the other hand, if you're le feeling less inclined to do that and you're a bit fed up with the whole thing, then it can just be a massive pain in the ass, and you can become a bit jaded with it, I guess. Yeah, but we've already have enough of jadedness in the sphere. In all honesty, <laughs> like, you know, I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and say it's always great. It isn't. It absolutely isn't. But you have to go through shit to get where you want. Be it in training, be it in dating, be it in wealth, be it in whatever. Being it in a YouTube channel. I mm. mean. I'm mm. at 1,700 subscribers right now. I started mm. at 10. My former content was shit. 
I mean, my writing still isn't great. My narration, some people like it, some people don't. I mean, you have to go through it. And well, when you succeed, it makes it all worth it. You have to be prepared to fail. I think that's the thing, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, and this is the case, whether you're talking about writing a book or writing an article or filming a YouTube video or anything, you know, you have to be prepared to, to just do it. And sometimes it may not be very good. And it's kind of like that with approaches as well. You know, uh, you have to be prepared to put in the hard yards and go up and actually talk to these women and um, try to make something happen. And sometimes you'll do an approach and it, it won't be very good. Or sometimes you'll feel rusty or tired or not in a good mood. And you're, you're just not going to come across very well. You know, you're not going to have that spark. You're not going to have that uh, joie de vivre that... Um, you normally had and it's just not going to go very well and maybe it's a bit embarrassing and you know maybe she said you know you feel a little bit bad about it afterwards but so what because that's only one iteration and you've just got to keep iterating right mm -hmm. did i tell you about one of my biggest failures in approaching no what was that so i was at um Zwolle station and I was this girl, cute girl, look absolutely great. So I walked over and well, did my thing, like, hey, you look absolutely cute and blah, blah, blah. And she was English, or she started talking English. I'm like, oh, you're not from around here, are you? Like, where are you from? She's like, Syria. I'm like, oh, what brings you here? But that was around the time that you had the Syrian refugees and the war over there. And she's like, uh, the war? I'm like, oh, <laughs> so um, <laughs> it was just flabbergasted. She looks at me like, Bye. Like just walked away. I'm like, oh, that, oh, that went bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, any sort of um, political stroke, catastrophe type um, thing that comes into an initial approach can sort of put the damper on it a little bit. I think. Mm. Um, so, so yeah. Although getting dissed by, uh, I, I, <laughs> in, in that context, I guess it's quite funny. But I mean, but, it but, is. but, but. but you know, but whatever. I mean, you you know, like you're not going to win every time. You're going to make mistakes. This is the reality of it. You know, we all say things that maybe, you know, later you think, oh, damn, I shouldn't have said that. I should have gone for something else or whatever. Well, so what? If you don't try, you're not going to get anywhere, right? Yeah. So, um, so it's, you know, the, ultimately, whenever you do this, you have to congratulate yourself for taking the action. The action that you took was walking up to the girl and saying that she looked nice and having that conversation with her the fact that you it didn't end in the way that you would have wanted it to end is unfortunate but look the main thing is you took the action right and that's we should all congratulate ourselves for taking the action rather than for the result because the result is always somewhat out of our control anyway oh yeah it absolutely is i mean again one time they're hot and heavy other times they're not exactly exactly and um what is hip hop says, um, I resonate with this. Wonder if it's to do with certain times of the year, some real good months with online dating, then a couple of lame months. There's that. I mean, do you think the algorithm comes, algorithms come into it a bit as well? Or maybe it doesn't, because if you're still getting matches, then, you know, there's mm -hmm. no algorithm for how responsive the girls is, is there? Well, my good friend Watson has a theory about this, and he calls it mating season. He's like, yeah. in, when spring comes around, it's way better. But yes. during fall and winter, it's always a bit mediocre. And there, there is some truth to it. There is some truth to it. Though, um, depending on where you use it, like, let's say you're just starting to use Tinder. In the beginning, it's showing you more to get you hooked on the app. Mm -hmm. So it's giving you more matches. It's showing your profile more. But then all of a sudden, you get less because then you get a bit lost in the algorithm and it kind of wants you to be a paying member. Right. But beyond that, it's not like you're not getting matches. You're just getting less matches than you were in the beginning because Tinder is trying to get you hooked on it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, and that's why some of these guys who are big into these these apps will um, will kind of dump their profile and reset uh, or set up a new profile because they want to get that initial bump again. Um, I've heard people like John and I think Myron talking about this, you know, that, that they've advised guys to do that. So you've got to be mindful of the algorithm, haven't you? But, but I guess if you're sort of getting a reasonable number of matches, then the issue is not so much, are you getting the matches? It's more like how responsive are those individual girls? And I think it is seasonal to some extent. I mean, the thing about spring 
Tom Torero would always talk about this, you know, like, and you can feel it. You can feel it um, when you, you know, when you, I mean, like at the moment, it's all dark and cold. And I mean, it's, it's all right now because it's Christmas, but you know, then we go into January, February, they're kind of fairly rubbish months, oh, but, then yeah. it, but then it starts to, you know, starts to get good, you know, like the sun starts to come out and people start wearing less. And it's like, this is, there's some nice vibes here and you can feel it, can't you? You can feel that difference. And of course, you know, there is going to be more fun stuff happening in that in that instance, right? Mm -hmm. If lockdown is finally going to be over. But again, that's why the dating apps are come in handy because, and I have said this before, girls do not care about lockdown if you are the right guy at the right place at the right time. Yeah, yeah. Well, they still want to have, everyone still wants to have fun, you know? I mean... Mm -hmm. Girls want to have fun, as they say, and um, they still want to have fun, regardless of lockdowns and all the rest of it. And you can be quite discreet via the apps, can't you? I mean, depending on what the restrictions are in your particular town or city. I mean, it's, it, you, you know, you, but you don't even need to go for a date. You know, you can you can set the thing up and you can be very, very discreet about it. And uh, you can have fun and pe it, it's it, it's just something you can kind of brush under the carpet. So it's a great time for it. It's a great mm -hmm. time for it. Mm -hmm. Just never see a teller again after that. Like nothing ever happened. But no, you're absolutely right. And this this trails in nicely to like the topic. Like it's all fine and then you get matches. But what do you do with the matches? Because matches to numbers isn't that hard either. But then it comes to the real meat, so to say. You want to go from the number to the date. Well, just on that point, what would you say? Because I haven't actually used apps for a little while. So what would you say your match to number sort of ratio is? Or what would you say an average might be? Because I guess you're talking about, because I suppose, and jumping ahead a little bit, I guess, I mean, the first thing that I would always do on the apps would be chat to them for a little bit, but pretty much ASAP, get them over onto my phone, get them onto WhatsApp. Exactly. Um, so is there any sort of ratio? Have you noticed or... <laughs> Does it vary? It varies. Again, depending on when you ask me. I mean, this week I had – no, this week and past week. So the last two weeks I had about, let's say, 20 matches, something like that, in the last two weeks. And I had about 10 to 11 numbers maybe. And of those 10 to 11 numbers, I had one day. So – yeah, it doesn't look that good. But again, of those couple of numbers, I had four that were hot and heavy. Okay. Including the one day, and then the day afterwards, it's all of a sudden, it's nothing. Or it's like, oh, I don't know if I can make it, blah, blah, blah. Maybe I can make it then. Or, you know what? We'll set the date to then. I'm okay. Like, okay, this could maybe happen again, and then all of a sudden, lukewarm reactions or whatever. And it's like, ah, this is going nowhere. Yeah. So, um, no idea actually what the ratio of that would be but my overall ratio of is out of 10 numbers there's one date okay and that's 10 numbers from dating apps and that's about uh, 20 to 30 matches so to say okay and what are you using? Are you just using are you using Tinder? Are you just using the one app or are you using a few or mostly Tinder? Bumble for not really not yeah. a great app in all honesty. Hinge every now and then. I had some good success on that a while ago. I think we should start a new dating app called Minge. <laughs> and Which just, if you're not familiar is a is a, a British slang word for the female genitalia. Oh. So Call the app Minge, and it could just be very no frills. This is this is what you get. This is what you see is what you get. Um, perhaps it could just go straight to the dick pic uh, news. Um, that could maybe that could just be the initial message that you have to send. I think that's called Grinder. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that site is. It sounds terrible. Oh, um, it is. it's the it's the gay dating app. Mm, mm. But no, I think I think a site called Minge could could work really well. Perhaps that's something we can we can pioneer next year. Get an IPO, make a bunch of cash, go and live in the Caribbean or sort of whatever. Right? Oh, that would be nice. That would really yeah, be it'll nice. be all right. But there's a, one point about your location. Obviously, we're not going to give your location away, but you are um, 
like you're not in the most populous area, right? It's fairly, yeah. it's it's a fairly small place where you're living, right? So, but it's sounding like the, the the dating market is still pretty buoyant there. Well, the thing is, like when it comes to online, like most big cities are only an hour away, so that's sixty kilometers to okay grab and take. So it's not that bad. Um, there's some other other larger larger cities, sort of say. So if you put the distance far enough, but not too far, you'll get you'll get good results. You'll get decent results. But in the in the town in and of itself, yeah, it's a bit disastrous. It's not a good place for day game. Absolutely isn't. What sort of population size have you got? No idea. I mean, what is it? Never looked this up actually. Yeah. Uh, really, they say that. Uh, I mean, if you get to a million, that's that's good. that's pretty good. Half a million, I think, is doable. Below oh, that no, is it's fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand, mostly elderly and things like that. Well, I suppose you got to. I suppose you got to take. <laughs> <laughs> what did Bruno used to say? Women peak at sixty. Like, oh. oh, mate! I mean, sixty is the minimum. I mean, for, for Bruno, it's like you know, when she's hitting seventy, that is like some real high quality uh, ass. Um, <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, but it's mostly um, middle aged. Mostly middle aged. Yeah, well, that's interesting. So, so that the so the actual town is really small. Then fifteen thousand is very small. So, yeah, you're right. Day game is kind of I. Th- it's going to be very tough in a place like that. But what about the conurbation? Does that mean that there's a sort of a population in uh, surrounding areas and stuff that you're tapping yeah. into? Yeah. Okay, okay. Mostly no, that's good. No, it's, it, it's just I'm just interested because obviously, I mean, living in London, where there's like eight, nine million people. Well, there probably isn't anymore actually because everyone's kind of getting away, and I don't really blame them. But you know what I mean? There's a big population in in one of these big cities. I guess. I mean, really, the thing must be on fire at the moment you know Hmm. well for the larger cities i guess so i mean there was an article uh when was this two weeks ago something like that groningen the one of the largest college towns we have in the north of the netherlands (sighs) some video leaked of a bus party and mm. everybody was riled up because they didn't take precaution of the uh, lockdown rules and whatever. But there's all sorts of, what's that called again? Paternities in Gronje. It's okay. absolutely insane. So you can guess what hap- what is happening there behind closed doors. Like, they really don't care about lockdown. Degenerate. They- oh, yeah. Degenerate. Actually, a friend, this girl that I know is who's now living in Berlin uh, with her. Well, I think I think they actually got married, but she's with a you know guy, whatever, right? And um, I, I she I sometimes get an updates from her in terms of what's happening on the ground there. And uh, like Berlin's properly locked down now, I believe. But this was a couple of months ago, and she said, um, and there was st- some club events were happening, like they were sort of outside or they were in you know o- sort of warehouse type of spaces, you know, not in the old, not in normal clubs, but more like outdoor type stuff, but things were starting to happen and she had gone to this um fetish event or like this this naughty sex kind of party type thing um i think it was actually kit kat club that that had done an event but at a different location like an outdoor event so i said to her oh so how was it what was it like and she said oh well um everyone was there she said you know it's about three in the morning everyone was there naked banging you know all on top of each other in this back and alien orgy and she said then the police turned up and the police all <laughs> Police have turned up and kind of came out and started investigating and everything, but everyone was wearing masks, and so um, they said, "Okay, fine, carry on." And then they drove off, and everyone cheered as the police uh, dispersed, and then they just carried on, um, yeah, carried on get, uh, get, get uh, getting down to it. So uh, a beautiful scene, a beautiful scene there in Berlin. Mm. Like how many of those officers would have just loved to join? Exactly, exactly. And they could have like got the handcuffs out, could be like, you know, just sort of um added that like like extra spice to it. So, um, party. Yeah, exactly. But I think I mean like we were saying, I think unfortunately a lot of Europe is now pretty pretty screwed, isn't it? I think everyone's kind of locked down or under restrictions. Quite literally, yes. But again, most most girls really don't care. If they want to get laid, they are gonna get laid. Whether well, by you, by me, or somebody else, they are they are out and about for it. 
Well, you can't suppress human nature, can you? And I've yeah. been saying this all along because it seemed obvious to me from the beginning. I mean, there were people at the beginning of this who were saying, oh, this is going to be the end of game. It's going to be the end of dating and stuff like that. And I was like, are you crazy? Like, what, what do you mean? Like, you, you don't, you, you know, human nature doesn't go anywhere. People don't stop wanting to get together just because of what's going on. It just gets pushed down or it just gets made more difficult. It doesn't mean people aren't going to do it, you know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But you'll have the naysayers always. Like, oh, that's change. I don't like change. Everything's gone wrong. And no, there's new opportunity. Like, good, times are changing. That means new opportunities for things to happen. But well, how do you put that? The wheat from the chaff is the expression, I believe. Exactly, exactly. Yes, absolutely. So um, getting back to the to the apps and to your uh to your um uh what am i saying so, sort of like how you operate in terms of getting girls out on dates so what's your what's your sort of modus operandi then how does it how does it break down i'm actually very direct to be very honest like um when i get the match i just say something about like the picture or whatever or i'm very how do i put that in general like hey insert name how's your well, what time of day is it tuesday morning and if they bite, they bite, sure. And then they tell me something, and then you get the hook. Like, what are they telling you something about? It's like, oh, I'm busy with the school assignment. I'm like, oh, school assignment. Eh? Oh, what's that all about? I bet you're a great student, not you, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And yes. then it kind of go from there. It's like, oh, you... how do I go about that again? It's like, oh, coffee or tea. So I'm like, oh, coffee. Well, we should get that together. Oh, that sounds fun. Well, give me your number. Let's make it happen. Okay. Yeah. That's the reason she's giving you a number. And then I text her, like, I'm free then and then. And that's where you get the attention seekers. Because then it's either sure or I can go. I can't do that, but I'm free then and then. Or, oh, you're moving rather quick, aren't you? Or it's <laughs> like, oh, I can't do then and then. No other, no other offer, whatever. That's when you get the attention seekers, and that's when you separate the wheat from the chaff. Because a lot of girls are still on dating apps looking for attention. So that's why I'm very direct in my approach to cut those out. I'm not a very big believer in building rapport on the apps. We all know why we're there. Exactly. It's to bang. Well, to put it bluntly, yeah. And I've been that guy often enough to know not to be, let's say, used for attention anymore. Because I know she's going to get a guy from the app who she wants to bang that same night. Yeah, actually, I'm talking about this in the Cat Academy course at the moment, in that you really, well, all of us really, we need to become more ruthless in some ways in the way that we uh, encounter the dating marketplace. And what I mean by that is you have certain objectives uh they say i'm pixelated i think that's just how i look i've just got i've just got a very bad complexion um but they you have certain objectives in this space right you broadly you want to meet girls and have sex with them okay so it's very it's very simple and some girls are going to be down for that they're going to they're going to like you and they're going to want to go along with that and and others aren't and that's fine but there's no point in dragging something out if it's not going in a direction that you want it to go right Mm -hmm. so well, so in that sense you have to be i don't mean ruthless in the sense of being nasty to people or anything but but you've got to think well okay what am, what am i actually here for what am i trying to to accomplish and if you're going down a, a rabbit hole with somebody where it's it's kind of not going in that direction then it's better for everyone concerned if you just cut it off right sooner rather than later mm -hmm. it's just a huge time saver and more guys need to do that and I'm guilty of it too, right? Sometimes I, I text way too long with her because yes. in my mind, sometimes it goes like, oh, you know what? She can't do tonight, but she's going to check her schedule and everything's going to be fine. And it's like, okay, kid, think again. Like, you know this, you've been through this. And now all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, never mind. Uh, next. Like, well, I, I suppose you can give her, you can give her the benefit of the doubt you know, once maybe or twice yeah. or something. I don't, I don't know, but 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 being dragged into something that goes on for ages is a very bad place to be, right? 
I, I usually give them a day. I mean, how long does it take to check a schedule? That's on her phone anyway, which she's yeah, using yeah, 24-7. Yeah. It's like, got to be realistic about it. And it sounds harsh, but I mean, guys, come on. She's on her phone 24-7. I mean, if she's not making time for you, she's making time for somebody else. Mm, mm. And you, at least... I try to approach it more and more from that side. Like, hey, if she's not making time for me, I'm going to make time for somebody else. And it's probably going to be me or a girl who's enthusiastic about me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's the point, isn't it? That's the point. I mean, and this is abundance mindset as well, right? Because it once you appreciate that, even in a town with 15,000 people, there are, <laughs> there are clearly uh, options to go around in that area. Um, and you know, wherever you are, there are billions of people on the planet. Um, why are you wasting time entertaining somebody who's just not that enthusiastic about you? You know, but she's hot, she's got big boobies. Yeah, but mm. you're never gonna touch them anyway. It's like, move on. That's exactly. the great thing about humans, and especially about females, they, they mostly all of them have boobs. At a certain, at a legal age, I mean, disclaimer. So she's not the only girl who's hot and has tits. There are more out there. And there Indeed. are women out there who are enthusiastic about seeing you. Absolutely. So you're waiting, you're sort of looking for, for them, really, rather than these people who are time wasters. And uh, Suspenser says, avoid one itis, the key to the game, which is true, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, you, you and I have have had one-itis um, years ago. It's like, ooh, that is not a good thing to have. Exactly, exactly. Um, so, okay, so Unknown says enthusiasm could be faked. In fact, girls do this all the time, so it's not a big indicator, I think. Mm, I like to disagree with that. How do, we, how do we measure enthusiasm? And what I mean with that is you get the match, she reciprocates and everything, like what's your number? She gives the number. You give the time and dates. And she's actually saying yes, and she's coming over. That, for me, is enthusiasm. Well, yes, exactly. I mean, the, the ultimate test, and it's not actually such a, a big test, really, is is she going to come out and meet you or not? <laughs> you know, and it's sort of like, if she is, okay, fine, then this could move forward. If she isn't, well, then I'm not going to spend ages on an app or on WhatsApp chatting to you backwards and forwards when it's just, you know, you like you can't even do the first very basic step towards us getting to know one another. Exactly. I mean, I've had girls travel to me even though they had to drive one and a half hours. Wow. So compared to that, why should I give a girl the time of day who's having trouble checking her schedule within an hour? It's like... That just doesn't compete. And once you've had the girls who are willing to travel that long to see you within like a day of meeting you, it just becomes so much more clear to you what genuine desire really is. Because genuine desire can be very physical, can, can be very visual as well. Oh, you... oh. <laughs> we're getting some X-rated stuff here now. No, 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 not necessarily that. But again, like from the pictures you have in your dating app and dating apps last time I checked aren't X-rated, I believe. Maybe Grinder, but I'm not on that. <laughs> Maybe you have more experience with that than I do. But <laughs> Oh, mate, don't, 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 don't be saying things like that. These Black Pill guys are going to clip all of this. <laughs> no, I've never used Grinder. I don't know what Grinder is. I do, I do think, though, I do think, though, that we should um, we should set up this new app called Minge. I think that could really be a uh, a big seller. And just be like, listen, I mean, this is 2021. We, we all know what we're here for. So this is a dick pic stroke vagina pic app only. That, that In fact, you don't even have a profile picture. You just the, the, the girl just puts a picture of her genitalia. And if you like the look of it, then you guys message and take it from there. And then you've got this coding system behind it. Like, this would be a perfect fit. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, he exactly. will give you he will give you enough pleasure he will reach deep enough to exactly and you could search you could search depending on your preferences as well like maybe you're into you know the the one like the ones that stick out a bit maybe you're into the, the more neat <laughs> ones that stick it maybe you're into the lamb kebab you know like whatever it is 
you could just you could put that into your settings and then you can get the, the relevant people within your catchment area. Yeah, colour filter. A little bit more, exactly. little bit more pinkish. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I think that they should uh, – that, that, I mean, we, we talk all the time about getting professional photography done for dating apps. So I think in this – you know, I, I think uh, professional photography for, for dick pics is something that really – there's a huge market there, guys. You know, because who's 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 doing proper professional dick pic, pic pictures? You know, this is this is just there's such huge demand for this now in the uh, you know with, with, in the age of Tinder. I always get weirded out when a girl asks for that. I don't know if you've ever had it. I've had a couple of girls asking me for that. I'm like, why? Like, why would you do that? I'm always so surprised when they ask it, and I'm I'm always very suspicious. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Like, no, that's not going to happen. Never mm. send dick pic, guys. Never. <laughs> that shit will haunt you. <laughs> <laughs> well, indeed, I, I can't possibly comment. I mean, to be honest, this is all, this is all such a generationally different thing for me. You know, back in my day, we were writing love letters with a quill pen on a perfume <laughs> paper. You know, so uh, so all of this stuff now. I mean, it's quite sort of uh, beyond the pale, really. But um, and um, so you will also, by the by the sounds of it, you will be pretty assumptive in terms of the dates and you and also the other thing i'm getting from what you're saying is you will lead right so it's not a question of like oh so uh what should we do well what do you like do you like pizza do you like uh do you like, do you like gin do you like cocktails you know it's like it's more like right there's this cool bar i know 7 p.m wednesday you know and just make it a face complete it's not even a bar it's like i have a coffee machine this is my town see you there it's like done coffee date it's it's been a while since I spent money on a date. Do you get them to come over to your place first? Is that is that generally what you're doing now? You're just saying, "Hey, come over." Yeah, most of the time, yeah, and that's okay. what I mean with genuine desire. I mean, if they want you, they will come. Like in some cases, it's like, okay, let's meet in like station of that town and take for a walk, things like that. But in general, it's her place or mine. I mean, it has, it has come to that where it's like you don't even have to take them out anymore. Rob and I discussed this as well. Rob did the same thing. Rob how, old is Rob, how old is Rob, by the way? How old is he again? Uh, 45-ish. Oh, is he? Okay, okay. Yeah, he's younger than Clary, I believe. Wow. <laughs> that's not saying much, though. I mean, Clary Actually, that's, 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 that's most of the population, isn't it, to be fair? Yeah. <laughs> Clary exceeds us all, man. <laughs> Josh, good to see you, man. Hope you're well. Josh is a great guy. He's he is. A great guy. He is. No, but again, like I've. So I mean, Rob is seriously. also Rob is also doing, you know, text and. Well, I mean, what do you call it? It's almost like the Deliveroo of dating now, isn't it? Yeah, kind of like that. Like my friend Watson compared it to fast food. But Where does he live? Uh, that friend of mine, same city as I do. Oh so, no, sorry. Uh, uh, Rob is Salt Lake City, isn't he? Yeah, Rob is Salt okay. Lake City. Okay, I don't know what I don't know anything about the dating scene over there, but um, but he like he's getting success. He's just getting to come over, and it's all good, right? And he's five foot four. Good God! <laughs> and he's getting laid. It's impossible. And he's bald as well. My head has just exploded. I can't believe like you're saying a man of five foot four has had sex. That is uh, unknown in the history of the world. He's at least a foot too short I to know. have um, ever seen um, a lady's lady parts mm -hmm. well i mean he's got the living. Living. it's in it's on eye height so <laughs> <laughs> blimey well there you go so you you heard it here first guys under six foot four can sometimes have sexual intercourse with a member of the opposite sex mm -hmm. willingly <laughs> willingly <laughs> absolutely incredible i mean you know it's the, these 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 are the kind of revelations you come to this stream for aren't they it's mm. a bit like you know you wouldn't have you wouldn't have thought this uh you wouldn't have thought this was possible as uh jaren says it's over it's over <laughs> um, but yeah so you're being very assumptive you're like okay so come over i've got a coffee machine it, blah 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 okay yeah. and then do, do you sometimes then presumably you get girls who prevaricate a little bit at that point you sometimes get girls who are like oh i don't know if i can make thursday or well again that depends like there are some girls who are like yeah sure i'll sh i'll see you in an hour i'll see you in 30 minutes that happens it happens hey i can't make it tonight but i can't make it that day at that time i'm like sure 
And there are girls who are like, oh, you move very fast, don't you? Like, well, life is short. Like, Absolutely. That's true. That's true as well. I mean, we can all be dead. You know, we can all be dead in next week. I mean, like, like, look at all the stuff that's happened this year, right? It's been such a crazy year. Mm -hmm. You know, you you, you want to get your end away before um, before the end of the world, don't you? Yeah. So I've been reading um, The Unplugged Alpha by Ritz Cooper, and he did it perfectly. The uh, 1 to 10 scale. Mm. And he summed it up as enthusiasm. Yes. Uh, the 9 to 10 is just like, hey, I like you. Want to get to meet you. When? Where? Now? Those are, those are the girls I go after as well. Then you have the, uh, what was it again? Like the 7 to 8 who are a bit on the fence but still willing. They will go like, hey, I can't make it tonight, but I can't make it then. And I'd love to go on a hike with you, whatever, grab a coffee. And then you have the 6 to, to 0 girls who are either attention seekers, just not interested, whatever. I've heard guys say there are, uh, oh, I had this. Oh, damn. I had it yesterday. Girls on there who get a match with you, they're hot and heavy, and then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, but I do ask uh, some uh, money for it. I'm like, holy shit. Like, nope. Or they they link you to OnlyFans or whatever. I'm like, nope. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, that that's um, that's just a, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's an instant block, isn't it, if anything oh, like yeah. that happens. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, but also with the attention seekers who are like, uh, oh, but I don't know you that long. Okay, next. Like, <laughs> done. No, because I know what they're there for. I've seen it so many times, Troy. Like, I am done with the um, let's see what happens. Because yeah, nothing yeah, yeah. ever happens with these girls. These girls are like, oh, you move pretty fast, don't you? I want to get you I want to get to know you more. No, there will be no knowing on this app. We will be knowing each other face to face. Yes, exactly, because you you can't <coughs> effectively get to know somebody on an app anyway. You know, ultimately, you have to meet up, right? Mm -hmm. It's not, you just, you, you know, just sending somebody little messages is not getting to know them, right? I mean, the, the apps are just there for logistics. And WhatsApp, in the end, is just there for logistics. It's like, how okay, what time are we going to meet? Where are we going to meet? That's it. Exactly. So um, they are being disingenuous when they say that. Or, I mean, it might not even be... It, the the other thing is that maybe they're not time wasters exactly, but but they've got other options elsewhere. So they're keeping you on the on the what do they call it? You know, like planes. You know, on the la circling the airport before they they're allowed to land. You know, they're keeping you sort of there on the off chance in case it doesn't work out with Chad or whatever. And then it's mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, well, you know, and it's a bit like, well, no, I'm not going to play second fiddle, you know, to some other dude that you're talking exactly. to. Exactly. I always call it the back burner. Like they keep you on the back burner for things yeah. like that. Yeah, and exactly. Again, if you you've, you have experienced this as well. I mean, you get a match and, like, again, she is enthusiastic about you. She's compliant about things like, oh, these are the dates he's giving me. Uh, look, yeah, that, that time and date will do. Once you've had that, you just lack the patience to deal with anything other than that. Yes. At least that's just my experience. Like when you've had genuine desire, everything beneath that is just pain. It's just pulling teeth. Is what well, it is. I mean, are we talking specifically about on the apps here, though? Because of course, like yeah, on, that on, is mostly on the apps. Yeah. On on apps, on apps, there is a limit to the amount of game you can do, isn't there? Really? I mean, yes, you could. You know, there are some clever, th funny things that people say, and. Uh, you know, clever openers and all this kind of stuff. But, and you have to bear in mind the principles of flirting and presenting her as the bad girl and polarization and all these kinds of things. But in the end, you know, it, it's like there's a limit to what you can really do to amp up attraction just by sending text on the app. So it, it, it's kind of like, I suppose in the, in the context of the app specifically, it's very much like, well, look, are you into this or not? Yeah, and that's what the pictures are for. I mean, if she's not into you, she shouldn't have swiped you right. You exactly. Know what I'm exactly. And that's that was mostly my comeback when a girl said, "Fun, oh, you move quickly." Yeah, otherwise I wouldn't have swiped you right. Like that's what we're here for. But nowadays mm. I just ignore it. Like next, like yeah, never mind. It's like, yeah. But in yeah. real life, that's different. Like you're not gonna walk up to a girl like, "Hey, wanna go?" It's like, "Whoa, who are you?" It's like that's not how yeah. this works. Yeah, exactly, and um, it's it's a different 
ball game in face to face in meetings because you can influence it somewhat by your personality, the way you come across, et cetera, et cetera. As much as you know, all the doomers would say that you can't and it's just about looks and all the rest of it. It's not true. The fact is that you, the way that you come across is very important. And if you do it well, you can add a couple of points. You can add a point or two points onto your SMV, right? And that makes a difference. So in real life, there's game, for, for want of a better term, is necessary and useful in terms of sealing the deal. But on the apps, it's a bit like, well, look, we all know what we're here for. It, it, you've seen the pictures, you know, you swiped on me. Do, do you want to, are we going to do meet up or not? Right. Mm. You know, what was that book again you wrote on, um, you described that friend of yours who was on the dating apps and he used, um, as a bio, like good girls swipe, right? Bad girls bend over. Oh, Which one was? <laughs> yeah, that, that's your work. I mean, I loved it. I used that for a while. It's not in uh, Tax Game Mastery, is it? I think it is. Because I, I talk about, I've got that book, Tax Game Mastery, but I it covers actually things like Tinder and stuff as well, because it's just about messaging. It's actually about what we're talking about now. It's about yeah. messaging. It's a good yeah. book. It's Thank good you. Book. No, but I used that bio for a while, and that really separates the wheat from the chaff, so to say. Really does like, like you've read the bio, right? It's like, oh, uh -huh. so, okay. yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah, 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 yeah. As the Greek surgeon, the geek surgeon says, he's 80 on here. Let's get those likes up. Smash that like button, guys. Help Nuke me out it. with the help me out with the algo. Let's get this thing, let's get this thing rocking. Um, so there was a couple of things. Uh, Pietro says, Can you get better numbers by practicing different type of game? Do you mean what when you say when you say numbers, do you mean more solid phone numbers? Or I'm not sure, I'm not quite sure what the question and, and what does he mean by different type of game? It's like as in uh, app game, uh, approach game. Uh, mm, I'm not social, quite sure. Social circle game. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe if you could clarify the question a bit, maybe we can have a more of a perspective. I'm not quite sure exactly what you mean. Um, Corona yeah. game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what is hip hop says, I have one girl say, what's with wanting to meet up? <laughs> Realize she was just online for attention. I imagine. Bingo. It's a bit like, what well, the, I, I, like Jesus. Well, well, he's not wrong. That's the kind of shit you get. I'm sorry, by the way. I don't know how much I can curse on this. I've been talking yeah. like a sailor. But indeed, things like that, like, oh, what's it with you and meeting up? We're on A. And I, yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. We're dating on a dating app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Um, so Pietro's come back and he says, yes, he means, like, could you, like, day game or night game? Can you get um, d better numbers by practicing a different type of game? But I think, really, it, it depends on what you are most attuned to right what, what what resonates with you best i guess yeah i mean for night game it's been a while since i went out it's been a while since everyone went out <laughs> yeah man that's true um, but I, I do enjoy it every now and then though like every like blue moon i just like to get shit faced just go out just approach everybody everything that moves just have conversations but Again, also there, if you have an eye for IOIs, things like that, you'll, it works. It just it the flows. One thing, the one thing I'd say about Night Game is that it, it's quite geared up for, for people getting together and, and actually things happening on that same night. Because as much as girls will say, oh, you know, I'm here to dance and all the rest of it. And, I, I mean, they, uh, in many cases they are. That, I get that's true. But let's face it, societally – nightclubs, bars, these kinds of places. Everyone kind of knows that part of what they're there for is for people, well, all of what they're there for is for people to socialize and people do get meet each other. They do get together. They will go and, you know, go and have sex or whatever, at, having met in those places. Everyone kind of knows that. So there's less of a conceptual leap to make when you meet somebody that night, that, oh, potentially this could lead somewhere tonight. I'm not saying it always does or it always should, but it, it, it can happen. Whereas if you meet somebody in Starbucks at 8 a.m. in the morning, then under in 9.99 .9 times out of 10, it, it's, it's going to have to be another date and it, it, that's going to take somewhat longer. And um, 
I mean, so I suppose in that sense, I mean, Night Game has that advantage, but then Night Game can also be quite brutal. Um, it, it it costs money. It, you have to be up at night, which is a disadvantage, for, um, you know, for some of us. And, um, you know, so there are downsides also, right? Um, I, get, I mean, you could argue the same about online game, though, couldn't you? You could argue that if you guys are on Tinder, you're both on Tinder, theoretically, you should be there for the same reason. So... You know, that should be more straightforward. But as we've seen from today's discussion, actually, there are girls on there who are disingenuous and will say, well, what do you mean meet up? And it's like, well, you're, we're on a dating app. What are you talking about? And what do you think this is? Grocery store? Piss off. No, but I mean, with night game, I mean, again, what is makeup? I mean, makeup is just war paid, to be very honest. In all honesty, makeup is just war paid. Like, I want to look hot for the best guy out there. That's just what makeup is. I mean, let's be honest. Hmm. But there are indeed some girls, don't know many of them, who just like to go out, have fun, do their little dance, whatever, and go home. But, but you can't tell me that there are girls who don't know that there are guys out there who are willing to approach them. They damn well know. If it really was all about the dancing and whatever, why not just clear the room, shove the couch out of the way, invite up over a couple of friends, put on some music and dance at home? Like, dancing yeah. can be done everywhere. Know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's also just that in many cases, she may just be out to have a dance and meet her friends and all the rest of it. But, but if the right guy was there, would she pass up that opportunity? Okay. And so if she's passing up that opportunity with you, is it just that you're not the right guy? Like if it was Leonardo DiCaprio, and I know we always fall back on these celebrity examples and you know, whatever, but but let's face it, then she would probably make an exception, right? So if you are high value enough, there's a chance she's gonna make an exception. So you need to work on being high value, whatever that means in your particular context. Wasn't that used to be called the Brad Pitt test? Like, uh, would she cancel on you if you were Brad Pitt? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think so. It's certainly it's an, uh, something that gets used a lot. And people sort of have a problem with it sometimes because they're sort of like, well, that's not realistic because none of us are Brad Pitt. So, you know, but I think it's valid, actually, because I think I think one has to have a certain degree of self-respect. And you have to kind of think, well, you know, the fact that she perhaps treats me in a, in a way that I, I I don't particularly like indicates that she just doesn't have that degree, that the correct degree of appreciation for me. Do you know what I mean? Because if it was Brad Pitt, then it would be a very different story. So therefore on the back of that, I make a decision to, to pull myself out of this situation. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Answering a question in the chat. No, but exactly that. And that's what I mean with the whole, um, with the whole dating app thing. Like, if they want you, they'll come and get you. They'll they'll do it. And that's why I, I just want to emphasis or want guys to focus on that. Like, again, she wants you. She'll comply. She'll make the time for you. She'll – how did Rolo used to say that? Crawl under barbed wire. Crawl, crawl through your window. Lose her religion. Leave her family. Things like that. She really wants, if women want to bang you, they'll find a way to bang you. And that's just true. And mm. it's just true. Yeah, exactly. So you are ultimately, what we're coming around to saying, or what we have said really, is that you are looking for those girls where there is that that spark there that is strong enough that it's just it's it's just a, a fate to come play. You know, like it's it's just it's just about logistics. And they are out there. And you know. And and people may say, well, so it's just luck and it's a numbers game and you have to be Chad and everything else. Well, yes, of course, being Chad helps, undoubtedly. But you can influence it by the way that you come across, okay? So in real life, your charisma, the way that you approach, the manner in which you present yourself, it's all incredibly important. And on the dating apps, you can help yourself out by improving your pictures because that's primarily what that's about. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, material out there now about how to do that. Mm -hmm. A lot. And again, it's like, oh, there's too much effort. It's pussy banging. Everything 
anybody wants takes effort. And like th this whole like, oh, it's pussy bagging and uh, these dating coaches, dating roaches or whatever they call us, whatever. It's like, guys, everything anybody ever wanted takes work and effort. Now get out there and do the damn work. Exactly. Unknown says, uh, ask for a date by displaying devotion and love. Unknown is uh, uh, commenting from 1794 when uh, perhaps that works. Uh, do um, we believe in a thing called love? Do. <laughs> <laughs> they were a great band, actually. The dog. Yeah. You, you know that Christmas song they did? Christmas time. Don't let the bells end. I know it. It's really good. Well, it's it's funny. It's funny, and it's like a it was a pastiche of those old seventies rock songs. Uh, it's good. Uh, Gary <laughs> said, um, "I replied to a girl after four days because her last message was rude, and now she's saying can't date a guy whose Wi-Fi is slow." <laughs> <laughs> and all the best. Can't you go back and say, "Like, no, I did it on four G." I don't think it's a good idea anymore. But I, well, whatever. I mean, okay. That I mean, girl, let her go. Like. Yeah, Piss yeah. off. Like, yeah, yeah, just yeah. block and buy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, okay, guys. Well, look, um, we need to call this one to a hawk because we're on the hour mark now. And uh, Jack has to go and probably do some lifting or something and maybe eat some. <laughs> I have to talk to people about lifting in my private community. Oh, and if you want to talk to Jack, what a, what a segue. If you want to talk to Jack about lifting in his private community, what do you do? Well, you go to the link. In the chat, that's to my channel, and you can click the join button for the private community. We're going to talk about muscle fiber specific training today. Right. So yeah, that's uh, that's going to happen as soon as I uh, as soon as we get off here. So if you're interested in that and more content about uh, strength training in particularly, you can uh, go on there. Excellent. Is that all on YouTube now, or, or are you using yeah. a different platform? Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. Yeah, most of it's on YouTube. Uh, also, Red Evening, every uh, Friday night, 10 p.m. Salt Lake City time, 6 a.m. for us Europeans. Uh, you can check out Red Evening, a uh, podcast with me and Rob Says from The Masculine Geek and robsays.net. We talk about mostly uh, life after the red pill. Mm, mm. So if you're interested in that, head over to my channel. Link is in the chat. Excellent. Excellent, guys. Uh, sorry, Jack. Um, fantastic. And guys, you, you need to check out Jack's content because it is awesome. He is a uh, a sterling member of the uh, this community, as, it, as they say, and uh, he's got some great content. Um, and thanks for popping in earlier onto my webinar, mate, as well. That was really no good. problem. Thank you for having me. No, indeed. I mean, come in, you know, we've got tonight and then we've got another two tomorrow as well. So if you're around, you know, head on down. Um, but anyway, uh, with that being said, uh, Gary says he's got a question. What's the question? Because, okay, here we go. Girls always say during approaches that you're nice and they say, sorry, can't give you the number. Well, okay. I mean, maybe you'll be, maybe you are being too nice then, you know, maybe you need to inject a bit more, uh, sexual tension into these interactions. Maybe you're coming over as too clean cut, too polite. You need a bit more of that bad boy type thing. Um, so maybe have a look at that. I mean, I've got videos on here about Dark Triad. It might be worth having a look at those. Or, of course, you could have joined Khan Academy. Um, and then we're, we're discussing all this stuff now within Khan Academy. But um, it's closed. But uh, look out for next year because we'll, we'll probably open up at some point again next year. But, yeah, I mean, you know, it, like it, it's hard to diagnose without obviously, you know, sort of meeting you or having a, a longer chat. But, uh, yeah, maybe you are just being too nice. And in which case you need to learn – the ways of the dark triad <laughs> can be a lot of things man can be a lot of things maybe you're coming on too hot and heavy maybe you're not coming on hot and heavy enough who knows I mean, exactly and the other thing is i mean how many approaches are you doing because like you've also got to work the numbers with this right i mean even if that happens to you a number of times you know it, it's just you've you've got to carry on and keep plowing through um so there's there's many different things that it could be but hopefully that helps a bit Anyway, guys, uh, do hit subscribe to this channel. Really helps me out with the algo. Um, do give me a like, give me a comment, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. It's all it all helps me to grow the channel, grow the audience, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, get on my free email list as well. There's a link. Um, there will be a link in the description uh, for that. So get on that free free daily email list. 
keep up to date with everything that I'm doing. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys again soon. I think we've got Black Label Logic on tomorrow. We've got a very special guest, Mr. Black Label Logic. So, nice. so yeah, uh, something to look forward to. Just doing a bit of an end of the year roundup. So look out for that. Oh, about that. Uh, speaking yes. about Black Label log Logic, filthy, filthy plug of mine, but I did both Black Label Logic's books on audio. I narrated them, and the link to that is in the chat as well. Filthy plug, sorry about that. But yeah, I am also a narrator of audio books every now and then, and I uh, did Gendernomics 1 and 2 by Black Label Logic. Wow, fantastic. Fantastic. So you need to check out that... Uh... You need to check out that shiz, guys, because um, <clears throat> BLL is a great writer and Jack is a has a very pleasing voice. So the combination of those two things is uh, is great. I do my best. Cool. OK, guys, um, Gary here saying he's approaching every day. OK, fine. I mean, I mean, look, so it might be the dark tried stuff. You need to maybe toughen things up a little bit. Come over. Not as nice. Be a little bit more mysterious. There's loads and loads of stuff I've I've talked about on my channel. Um, so yeah, or drop me an email, try at realtroyfrancis.com if you want to chat about it more offline. But yeah, all right, guys, got to hit, hit the road now. But thanks everyone for tuning in. I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Uh, see you later. See you soon, guys.